Now, why does it say, but especially desire spiritual gifts, but then it qualifies it and says, especially that, that you may uh, prophesy. Now, when people read that, that's when they begin to get kind of like misled to think that, oh, you know, prophecy is something that I should pursue beyond, better than tongues. So tongues is a lesser gift than prophecy. So they make that wrong comparison. But I want you to understand that 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is a chapter that uh, speaks on the comparison between tongues and prophecy. Okay. In addition, we will see that it is also a comparison between personal edification and public edification. Can we say the word together? Edification. Edification. This word edification is very important for us to remember as we study chapter 14. Personal edification, devotion of tongues, public edification is prophecy. Okay? Gift of tongues with interpretation would be public edification. Now, it says, but especially that you may prophesy. Now, why does it say, especially that you may prophesy? Why should you especially desire to prophesy? Okay. What is Paul saying? He is not minimizing putting down tongues as far as in comparison to prophecy. But, we have got to understand, in a different setting, in the public setting, prophecy is better than devotional tongues. All right? Because devotional tongues is for the what edification? Personal edification. Prophecy is for public edification. All right, now you're getting it, okay? So Paul is saying this, actually. If you desire to bless people publicly with spiritual gifts, you should particularly seek the gift of prophecy in comparison to tongues because prophecy is for public edification while tongues is for personal edification. So question, therefore, in the setting of the church public meeting, which is a better or greater gift, prophecy or tongues? Prophecy. prophecy. Now remember, the question is, is not which is the greater gift, prophecy or tongues. The question is, in the setting of the public meeting, which is the greater gift, prophecy or tongues? And that's, in that case, it is prophecy, because the setting is public, okay? But in the setting of one's personal devotion, which, which is greater, or which is better? Which is a better gift, prophecy or tongues? Tongues, tongues okay? Now, so in this situation, it can't necessarily, doesn't necessarily have to be prophecy, because it's most likely tongues is better, because it's for personal edification. And normally, prophecy is not used to prophesy to oneself. In other words, I don't normally say you know, to myself, thus says the Lord to Lloyd Watanabe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, in the personal setting, tongues is better than prophecy. You see, prophecy is only better and greater than tongues in the public setting. All right? So let's continue to read verse 2 down to verse 5. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him, and God made it that way. Howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. So we speak mysteries unto God, and then later on God reveals to us the mysteries of the kingdom. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to who? To men, not to self, but to men. He who speaks in a 
tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church, the public meeting. I wish you all spoke with tongues. <laughs> Hallelujah. But even more that you prophesy. Now this is where people get thrown off again. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive what? Edification. Remember now he's talking about in the church or public meeting uh, setting. All right? So Paul is qualifying his statement. He says, unless he interprets uh, that the church may receive edification. So prophecy is only greater than tongues in the public meeting setting. Okay, in a public meeting situation. Now, going down to verse 6 to 25, this section is talking about tongues in a public meeting that requires interpretation. All right? And it, because uh, it talks about the distinction of sounds. Okay, now let's, let's read from verse 6. But now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? In other words, if I come speaking to you in an unknown tongue, but if it's not with any kind of uh, revealing or without any knowledge concerning what I'm talking about, then it's not going to really profit or benefit you. Even things, verse 7, even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played for if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound who will prepare for battle so in other words when you hear the sound of a trumpet you're in the military and say you're in the cavalry or whatever and so when the trumpet goes ta ta da ta ta da ta da ta ta da ta da and that might mean retreat. Let's get back, let's get back. You better know the sound. Because ta ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da ta ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da ta da would be what? Let's go charge and go forward. So you see, there's a different distinction in sound. Okay? So you understand what the trumpet is saying. Alright? So now if you don't understand what the trumpet is saying, then you think, hey, I don't know if we should come go forward or backward or run away or whatever. You know? <laughs> so then now, he says here, verse 9, So likewise you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner, or it says I shall be a barbarian to him who speaks. And he who speaks will be a foreigner or a barbarian to me. So, in other words, if I'm speaking, say, right now, I come to you and there's a few Japanese people here that can understand Japanese. They're Japanese people, but not everybody can understand Japanese. But if I spoke in Japanese today, uh, and I say, あの、<笑><笑><笑> so, I 
said about, you know, this morning I want to talk to you about speaking in tongues and those that speak in tongues, devotion in tongues, receive strength as they begin to speak out and, and pray. And the thing is that, but you, if you didn't know what I was talking about, well, James by faith, and he knows a little bit, he said amen, but if you didn't know what I was talking about, then I would be a foreigner to you, a barbarian to you, and you would be a barbarian to me. I mean, the thing is that I could be preaching this whole message in Japanese, and it'll be a good message, and it'll be a real wonderful message, but at the same time, it doesn't benefit or profit you because you wouldn't understand what I'm saying. Now, but does that mean we should eliminate the Japanese language because you don't understand? No. So does that mean we should eliminate devotional tongues because you don't understand? No. You see, in the same way, that's why, but that's why when we speak in tongues, if I come up and I speak in tongues, this devotional tongue, and you don't understand, I'm just really speaking into the air. So what Paul is saying, in the public setting, he says, what profit is there for you to speak in tongues when people don't understand? In that setting, prophecy is greater than tongues. Because of edification, because you see, Prophecy would edify people because it's with understanding. Well, tongues doesn't bring edification, and that's why it is a lesser gift than prophecy. But that doesn't mean that tongues is a lesser gift than prophecy. It is only a lesser gift than prophecy in the public setting. You see that? All right. Hallelujah. So we get to be very smart. <laughs> Praise God. If you can understand chapter 14 of Corinthians, oh, you're brilliant. Yeah. Okay? So now, verse 12. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you may excel. That word edification comes out again. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue Pray that he may what? Interpret. Okay? Now, in other words, it's not saying that when you speak in devotional tongues, pray that you interpret, that you can interpret what you just said. That's not what it means. There's some people that say, oh, you know, and that's where there's another uh, religious spirit. They want to make themselves spiritual. Oh, I spoke in tongues, and you know, I prayed and asked God, give me an interpretation, and you know, he gave me. Why would he want to give you an interpretation? It's supposed to be an unknown tongue. You're not supposed to know. All right? Now, he's talking about in the public setting, if you spoke in tongues, then you should pray that you interpret. If you can't, if you're not going to interpret, then close your mouth. Zip your lip. Okay? So now, in, in, in the time when we have free praise and worship, we praise and worship the Lord, and we shouldn't speak out in tongues. I mean, we can speak out in tongues, but don't speak out so loud that the person next to you can hear your tongue. Speak it out in a way where it just blends and then nobody can really hear what you're saying. It's not like you're standing out, okay? So, so that when new people come in, they don't understand speaking in tongues, they don't get confused and they don't get alarmed, all right? They don't think that we're crazy, okay? So now we need to be wise in how we use uh, the gift, okay? So, um, that's why people who, who worship here, just want to let you know, worship team, when we're worshiping the Lord, you got the mics, don't speak in tongues. When we are praising and worshiping the Lord, use your English language or whatever language, all right? Because when you speak in tongues and it comes through, then people who come for the first time, they'll listen to this and say, I don't know what he's talking about, and they get confused. Now, at the end, when I give instructions, when we say, okay, now today, so people can receive the Holy Spirit, we're going to speak out in tongues, and then that's okay because you know what I'm doing, all right? Because it's instructional, and there's uh, knowledge that's going on, okay? 
So, <clears throat> it says here, uh, verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I'll also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say, Amen, at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? In other words, when he talks about when you pray with the Spirit, bless with the Spirit, in other words, when you're speaking in tongues, unknown tongues, how can he who doesn't understand you, he who is uninformed, say Amen, when he doesn't really comprehend what you're saying? For in for verse 17, you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. In other words, he's saying, it's not that you're not giving thanks when you're speaking in tongues. You are giving thanks, but the other person is not really being blessed and edified. Therefore, you shouldn't speak out in tongues. You should speak out and pray with the understanding of praying the known language. He says here, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. That means he saw the importance in speaking in tongues. There's tremendous benefits in speaking in tongues. So he says, I thank my God, I speak in tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. Now, but does that mean once again that he's saying the 10,000 words in an unknown tongue is bad? No, it's not bad. It's okay. But don't say it in the public setting because it's not going to bring edification. So many times people have used that, oh, you know what, I'd rather just speak five words that I understand than, oh, 10,000 that I don't understand. So I'd rather be speaking prophecy, I'd rather have that gift, so I don't need the gift of tongues. Actually, a lot of times, these people really, when you really talk to them, they've actually asked God for the Holy Spirit and they wanted to speak in tongues. And when they prayed, they didn't get it. <laughs> so they said, you know what? Oh, and that's why I'm going to have prophecy. I rather prophecy the other gifts. But, but see, they didn't have the faith. The teaching is not there. Every person can receive the devotional tongue as they receive the Holy Spirit. Can I hear a great big amen? amen. Now, this is important for you to understand. You know, I tell you, some of you are kind of like falling asleep on me. <laughs> I know it's not because of the message. That's because you went to sleep late last night. <laughs> but you need to really understand this chapter so that you can explain it to people. Because that's why so many people put down Pentecostals so they, they just uh, get robbed of this Pentecostal experience. They can all receive that. All right? Okay. So, now, I want you to understand here. Not so bad, huh? Okay. Now, here's a person and when he says, when I pray with the Spirit, oh, gotta, I'm making sure Angie sees my beautiful pictures. <laughs> I don't know, I gotta drink water today. So, <clears throat> a person baptized in the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, he says, out of your heart, or out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. That's in John chapter 7. I think it's verse 38 or 39, anyway. I think it's 38. 
And so, praying with the Spirit. This is um, 1 Corinthians 14. Uh, 14 to 15. Okay, so I will pray with the Spirit, and he says, I will pray with the understanding. Okay, so now, here a person prays, speaks out in tongues. He says, pray. he says, I'm praying in the Spirit. Okay, so this is the Spirit. So he's speaking out, and this is tongues. He says, this is without understanding. Okay? Without understanding. But that's okay. Because you're not speaking to men. You're speaking to who? God. 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 All right? So, as long as God understands, that's all right. Now, he says, you pray with the Spirit. And then he says, I'll pray with the understanding. Right? Doesn't it say that? Yes. Remember in verse 14, he says, I will pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? So what's the conclusion? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray also with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I'll also sing with the understanding. Okay? So praying with the spirit is here. Praying with the understanding is praying from here, so the mind, yeah. you see? Yeah. And then here, you pray to God. Okay, so this is the mind. So one originates from the spirit, another one originates from the mind, that's where you understand what you're saying, and so you're praying with the understanding. You see that? So in other words, when a person prays in tongues, so I just for demonstration purposes, not to get people confused, so that I'm going to pray in the spirit. Okay, so now here I, I'm praying in the spirit, then I pray with the understanding. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you. I give you praise. I give you all the glory for your goodness. So I'm praying in the spirit, and then I pray with understanding. I will sing in the spirit, hallelujah. Ramanda lama kasinde, roto sonda ramamande, Okay, so I'm praying, singing in the spirit, and then I will sing also with understanding. Praise the name of the Lord. I give you thanks to God, and I exalt your name. Okay, so that's what it means. Here, pray. I will pray in the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding. I will sing in the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Good. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now we come down to verse 26. Oh, no, I didn't finish. Uh, okay, verse 20 now. So it says, verse 20. Brethren, do not be children in understanding. In other words, don't be novices. Uh, however, in malice, be babes, but in understanding, be mature. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to this people, and yet, for all that, they will not hear me. In other words, he says, I will speak with them with stammering lips, says the Lord. Therefore, tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe. In other words, the gift of tongues are for a sign, not to those who believe, but to unbelievers. But prophesying is not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. Therefore, if the whole church comes together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those who are uninformed or unbelievers, Will they not say that you are out of your mind? Or will they, they not say you're crazy? That's why I'm saying when we have free praise and free worship, we can speak in tongues. But make sure you're, when you're speaking in tongues that you blend in, all right, so that people can't hear you. I remember there was, um, 
there was a, a visitor, well, 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 I think it was somebody in our church, and he, he also was speaking in tongues, but he was speaking out really loud. And he came from another church, and I had invited him. In fact, he's a pastor from another <laughs> church that I, came, that I invited him to uh, hear Pastor Sean Kim. And so he and his wife were over here, and he went the free praise, and he was going at it. He was a man speaking out in tongues really loud. And then there was a visitor, which was brought by Pastor Sean, and he was looking at the guy. He wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit. He wasn't speaking in tongues, so he thought, man, this guy is really out of order. He was criticizing him. I said, oh, but you know what? He's not from our church. He said, oh, okay, then. <laughs> so it's okay. This morning when we had free praise, I was speaking out in tongues, but nobody could hear what I was saying because I was speaking in a way so that you couldn't understand. Okay? So now, <clears throat> we don't want to bring a distraction. Verse 24. But if all prophesy an unbelie and an unbeliever or an uninformed person comes in, he is convinced by all, he is convicted by all. And thus the secrets of his heart are revealed, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is truly among you. Okay? So there's a conviction when they understand. They won't have a conviction if they don't understand. Now, jumping down to verse 26. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, or a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. He says, let all things be done for what? Edification. So it's good that we have a variety of like body ministry of all these different types of um, teachings and exhortations. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be two or at the most three, now this is important, each in turn and let one interpret. Okay, now, in other words, if anyone speaks in a tongue in a public <coughs> meeting, let there be two or at the most three. In other words, but let each one speak one by one. That's why it says each in turn. So, in other words, we have tongues and interpretation. Sometimes we, we praise and worship the Lord, we come back down, it's quiet, and then somebody speaks out in tongues. And then somebody may interpret what that tongue was just, uh, that tongue that was just given. Now, but you should, if a person is speaking in tongues, you should do it, and if you're going to give a message in tongues, you should do it one by one, each in turn. In other words, don't do it at the same time. There was this one meeting where this minister was sharing how that there was a lady that was speaking out in tongues. She was giving a message in tongues. She began to speak out. And then there's another lady across the aisle at the same time. She started to speak out in tongues too. And then so they both started. And so the one lady wanted the other lady to stop, and the other lady wanted this lady to stop. And so this lady is giving the, the, her, the, the, the message in tongues. She's going, And the other lady is going, And so they both are going to tell each other to stop. But it says, each in turn, one by one. And you see, there was not order in the church, in the Corinthian church there. So Paul is giving them instructions so that there would be decency and order in the meetings, okay? <laughs> I mean, you would think it's just logical or common sense, but some people got the egos right, even while speaking in tongues. <laughs> so, verse 28, but if there is no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church, okay? And let him speak to what? Himself and to God. So it's not wrong to speak in tongues. It's, if there's no interpreter, just speak, but speak to yourself. And keep it between you and the Lord. 
Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. But if anything is revealed to another who sits by, let the first keep silent. For you all, you can all prophesy by, oh, it says over here, excuse me, one by one. That all may learn and others all may understand and all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. In other words, just because a person prophesies doesn't mean that this is thus says the Lord, that it is really thus says the Lord. It is subject to another prophet to judge that prophecy as well. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but uh, they are to be submissive, as the law also says. And if they want to learn something, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in church. In other words, that doesn't mean that per a woman cannot come up here and give a teaching or give a testimony, but that sometimes in the church there, in the Corinthian church, while, while the pastor was preaching, the lady would stand up and ask a question, and so he said, sit down, just ask your own husband the question, instead of disrupting the meeting, okay? And if you ask your husband the question, then if he doesn't know the answer, then he'll study the Bible, or he'll ask the pastor, and you help your husband to become a student of the Word, okay? So, Verse 36, or did the word of God come originally from you, or was it you only that it reached? If anyone sp thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which are right to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if anyone is ignorant, let him be ignorant. In other words, if a guy is going to be dumb, then he continue to be dumb. <laughs> Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with what? Um, let what? All things, not some things. Let all things, even including tongues, be done decently and in order. Hallelujah. Got that? Let's give the Lord a clap for you. Oh, praise the Lord. And so I want to just let you know, abuse and misuse is no reason for disuse. Did you get that? <laughs> abuse, abuse, and disuse, and misuse, misuse, no reason for disuse. Airplanes crash, but that doesn't mean we don't, we don't ride airplanes anymore, right? Okay. So now, people may abuse or misuse the, the gift of tongues. But that's no reason for just casting it out and saying, hey, we don't really need it. That's why some Christians get robbed of the Holy Spirit of experience and speaking out with other tongues because they, don't, they think they don't need it because of the abuse and misuse that they've seen. People devalue tongues because they teach that prophecy is greater than tongues. And also they cheapen tongues by saying that it is the least of the gifts because it is mentioned last in the order given in 1 Corinthians 12, 28. But that again is a misinterpretation of that scripture. However, they are in error because they have interpreted the scriptures wrongly and they've taken it out of context. So now a question. When you take the text out of the context, what are you left with? A con. You see? <laughs> and for many years, the devil have conned Christians from receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues because He's been able to cause them to take the text out of the context. And that's why they're left with a con, and they've been conned by the devil all these years. Everybody can receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Dr. Carl Peterson, who's a Christian, 
shared this at a Bible uh, prayer meeting, but let me share this with everybody. Dr. Carl Peterson, who was a Christian, who is a Christian, was a psychiatrist at the Oral Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma, was also a brain researcher and made certain studies some years ago on the psychological effects of people who play in tongues by putting electrodes on their brain. And this is what he concluded. As we pray in the spirit, there is activity that begins with our brains. And as we engage in speaking in tongues, there are two chemical secretions that the brain releases that are directed into our immune system, giving 35 to 40 percent boost to our immune system. Hallelujah. This secretion is triggered from a part of our brain that has no apparent activity on the part of humans. In other words, only those who pray in tongues can activate this particular part of the brain. So praise God. Benefits in receiving the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Therefore, if you need a boost and increase in your immune system to more effectively fight disease in your body, receive the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. In Luke chapter 9, verse 11, verse 9 to 13, it says, For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, find you, and knocks, the door shall be opened. He said, if you you know how to give good gifts to your children, and yet you being not perfect, imperfect, you being a sinner, yet still be able to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Hallelujah. Ask, and you shall receive. This morning, we're going to ask for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to sing this song with the tune of Amazing Grace. Let's just sing Praise God, Praise God. And then we're going to pray. And we're going to just believe that different ones can be filled with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all stand in the presence of the Lord. And let's just sing this chorus. In the key of F. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. 